Hello everyone and welcome to a new video in our IFS Cloud video series. My name is Marcel Aushan and I'm an IFS consultant and today I plan on discussing and showing how to manage part creation in IFS Cloud. So we will be going through the different part structures that exist, uh, starting with master part, inventory part, purchase part. We will touch a little base bit on the sales part as well. Uh, so first of all, in order to understand how the part structure works in IFS Cloud, yeah, we have the, to have a look at the following image that's pointing us into the, the correct direction. So basically at the top of the hierarchy, we have the part catalog, which is a global data. So basically all the companies, all the sites, all the users, once they have access to the part catalog, irrespective of their sites or companies, they can see the part catalog data. Yeah? So this is part catalog, if you will, is the master part. And then going one level below, we have the different topics about inventory part and non-inventory part. Of course, in our scenario, since we want to be selling some inventory parts to Decathlon, to the customer that we created in a previous video, yeah, we will first start with having a look at the part catalog and then inventory part is everything that you can put in your warehouse. Yeah. Usually it's a physical part, has some physical dimensions and can be stored in your warehouse. Yeah, and now your inventory part can be of different types. Yeah? You can have your inventory part be of type purchased. So you buy that inventory part from another supplier. This is what we will do in this um, demo series. So whenever we create an inventory part of type purchase part, then immediately a purchase part will be created automatically for us. Of course, we can have the scenario where our inventory part is manufactured part. So this means we will produce it in our site in the shop floor. And of course, since we don't purchase the parts just for the sake of purchasing them, but we also want to sell them, of course, then we also need to create our inventory part as a sales part so that we can put it on a customer order. Yeah? And when we talk about sales parts, yeah, we can have single sales part or we can have manage them like a package. Yeah, but I will go into these details in a later video. For now, what we will be doing, we will be starting from the inventory part. Yeah, we create the inventory part. The creation of the inventory part will check if there is a part catalog existing. If there is no part catalog, it will also create a part catalog automatically for us, which is quite a nice feature. And then if we create the inventory part as a purchase part type, then also the purchase part will be created automatically for us. And then we will also have a look at uh, the sales part creation. Yeah. On the other side is the non-inventory part. This deals with all kind of services that we can purchase or sell. Yeah. Also, the services that we purchase have prices the same as the services that we sell. But basically, these are non-tangible um, parts so it's not something that you would normally put in your inventory good but without further ado let me dive straight into the system and then we can have a look at how to create the inventory part and the master part the purchase part and sales part so basically we start this process from the inventory part if you remember i was telling you the inventory part it can create automatically the part catalog if it doesn't exist. Yeah? So it makes sense we start the process from here. So how do we create an inventory part? Basically, we just press the plus sign to copy the part, to create a new part. Then we can give it a, we can give it a number. Basically, it's an alphanumeric character that is allowed to be, to be passed in. So I will just create a bar number for a bicycle called cube reaction pro let me just put some dashes in between cube reaction pro that we will sell to the yeah now you remember that i was telling you inventory part 
is already site specific yeah? and this means whenever we create an inventory part we need to link it with a site yeah? in turn the site is linked with a company and in the company there is all the financial transactions Par status we leave it as active because we want to be able to purchase it we want to be able to sell it yeah you see par type automatically defaulted to purchased we can um, change it if we want but for this case we will leave it as purchased in another video we will try to manufacture it but for now we will leave it as purchased as soon as i leave it as purchased and i will press save button the save button a purchase part will also be created for this inventory part no? then inventory valuation here we can set to weighted average this means it will take the price from the purchase order and that will be considered the cost we can say cost per part okay zero cost forbidden that's fine inventory unit of measure here we can say it's pieces and you see we have two if i type in pieces we have two unit of measures yeah so basically pieces all capital does not allow fractions so here you must have say one bicycle two bicycle three bicycles whereas pieces with lower case allows um, decimals yes yeah, so we can have 1.5 bicycles for example but in our case we must choose uh, pieces with capital capital letters yeah. we can do quite a lot of different things here different classifications different parameters for counting yeah for now i will leave everything as it is maybe just put a purchasing lead time of let's say 10 days and the rest i will just leave it like that so i will just save it and you notice now we get a new assistant popping up uh, because the system identified the fact that we don't have a um, master part, a part catalog created for this, and it's offering us the option to create one. Yeah. Of course, we can specify some, some attributes that will be saved at master part level. The only thing that I would say we would do, so for load batch tracking, we will enable load batch tracking based on the order, order base. So this means as soon as we receive something in the system with a purchase order, then the purchase order number, purchase order line will be our lot batch. So we can easily track this in our inventory. And of course, we are discussing about the bicycle. Usually these are quite expensive. So we will also want to track the serial number. Yeah, so we will want to, to handle each item in the inventory with the serial number yeah so at receipt and issue and also in inventory we want to know by serial number and also when we deliver we want to know which serial number we delivered to our customer uh, in case we want to enable some warranties and all that stuff it's worth knowing which serial number you delivered to which serial number the warranty is applicable yeah? so i will just leave it like that for now and just save it and now we have our very first inventory part, which is active. And if I go here to part pages, we can go and navigate to the part, which this is, would be the master part or the part catalog that we just created with the assistant. And you can see here that it has the serial tracking checkboxes that we have defined and also lot batch tracking is order based here we can do a lot of different things yeah we can set up some language descriptions some handling unit capacities yeah if you handle this part by by a larger number like in boxes or in pallets and yeah, this is useful when we do that but for our purpose it's good enough just to have a look at the, um, the part yeah it was created correctly and then we can go back into the inventory part. Yeah, so now we are taking to the inventory parts overview. We can view the details. And here again, we see the part that we have created. Uh, maybe one thing that I will do is also have a look at the purchase part. Yeah, so if you remember, I was telling you that as soon as we create a part type, of, of inventory part of type purchased then we immediately have the purchase part created yeah, so we can go there and see and we have come to the purchase part and indeed here we see 
the details of our purchase part. Here we can set up things like different purchase groups, which are good for finance. We can set up different buyers. Yeah? So who from our organization is responsible for taking care of the supply for this part number. Yeah, we can set up some different parameters for over delivery. Yeah? If we want to do a check or do not perform any check, if we purchase one piece and the supplier delivers three pieces, what do we do? Do we receive them or not? Yeah, so different things that we can set up here. We can also have an overview which suppliers are delivering this part. At the moment, we don't have any supplier created, so no link between the supplier and this part in the, at the moment. Yeah, but it's important to have a purchase part in order to be able to create a PO for this part. Yeah. Then uh, we go back to the inventory part. Yeah, and other things that we can see here, if we go to inventory details, we can set up some default location when where we want to receive this part, some put away zones. We can set up some uh, availability planning parameters like um, how MRP should run for this, um, for this part, but I won't go into all of these details now. And the next thing, next thing that we will do basically if we go back to the purchase part, we would be to create a sales part. Yeah. In order to create a sales part, of course, we can go to the navigator and try to create a sales part. So find a page in the navigator to create a sales part, or we can go to the purchase part. And in the purchase part, we have a create sales part button. And this is a pretty common scenario that every organization will have some purchase parts, they purchase from the suppliers and then just resell. Yeah, so it's quite common functionality. That's why we have this create sales part button already in the purchase part. So we will just press the create sales part button so we can define some data for the sales part. So we can define a sales price group. Now we will just leave the default one and the sales group again, the default one uh, sales type, we can say if it sells only or rental or both sales and rental, we won't be doing rental. So it sells only, and we can even specify a price. Yeah, maybe let's say 2,500 euros. Yeah. And we also say it's taxable. Good. Of course, when it comes to pricing, we will have separate videos going in deep into the different pricing logic. Yeah, it's not that you just put a price here and that's it. Additional functionality is available for managing prices in the price list, in a customer agreement, in a marketing campaign, for example. Yeah, but we will discuss this in, in another in-depth video. Yeah, so for now, we just want to create a sales part because our goal is to be able to create a customer order for this sales part. So we just press OK. And now we can see the message that our sales part cube reaction pro has been created. OK, perfect. And now if we go back to the inventory part, let's see if we have a way from the inventory part to jump into the sales part. Uh, no. So unfortunately, we will need to type in the navigator sales part and then find our sales part that we have created here. Yeah, so we have our sales part created here. In fact, for this site, the E011, this is the only sales part that exists. And some additional things that we could configure here. So we mentioned the price. Uh, a yeah, different unit of measure, which is inherited from the inventory part. But here we could set up some conversion factors. Yeah, if we buy, it's a common practice, for example, for companies in uh, US, if they do business in with Europe, European companies, they would buy things in kilograms from their suppliers in Europe, but store it in, uh, in pounds in their inventory. Yeah, so this unit of measure section is useful for that to do the conversion automatically. We can also set up some minimum sales quantity. Yeah, so we want to get some warnings whenever we sell less than, I don't know, 10, 
10 pieces, then we will get a warning in the sales, in the customer order. Yeah, we can even set up some replacement parts. If we don't have this part on stock, uh, we can uh, specify another part that could be, could be replaced. Good. Then other things that we could do, we could have different descriptions in different language codes. Yeah, different than the description from the part catalog, for example. We can define certain characteristics yeah, for, this, for this bicycle, even some charges, handling fees or shipping fees and so on. If we set them up here, they will appear in the customer order. Yeah, we can um, also create some substitute parts. Yeah, again, if we have some um, shortage for this part in our inventory, we could potentially supply our customers with yeah, some alternate sales parts for this. No? But for the purpose that we wanted to achieve in this video, and I will put again the part structure on the screen, yeah, so we have created an inventory part of type purchased. As soon as we created this inventory part of type purchased, a purchase part was created and immediately also a part catalog was created. Now in the part catalog, we set up the um, serial tracking and the lot batch tracking. And then from the purchase part, we also created a sales part with the create sales part button. No? So this was all for this video. I hope you have a, an understanding on how different part structures work in IFS. And of course, the topic is way more complex than I try to, to describe in this video, but we will have subsequent videos going into in more depth on the different functionality that can be enabled from the different inventory parts, purchase parts, or part catalog um, parameters. Until then, have a good rest of the day and stay safe. Bye for now.